Uh, dear friend, so in the previous session of uh, digital electronics, we have discussed about the uh, Boolean algebra, Boolean law, and uh, simplification of the Boolean expression. Now, in this lecture, we will discuss how to write the Boolean expression. Basically, when you want to design the circuit, then we have to write the Boolean expression, and from the Boolean expression, you can draw a logic diagram. But how to obtain the Boolean expression? So, here for that we have two methods that is known as a one of the methods which is known as a SOP method or it is known as a sum of product method. Sum of product method. And another method is, which is called a POS method, it is known as a product of sum method. So using these two methods, we can write a Boolean expression. So basically if you see the design flow of the digital circuit, then first of all, what you have to do, that you have to define the problem. Remember, the first step is that define the problem. Define the problem means you have to define the variables and for which variable you want a output high or low. So accordingly you have to define the problem. Then once the problem is defined, then for that problem you have to prepare a truth table. What is a truth table? Already you know, it is representing the combination of the input variable and for that corresponding variable uh, a combination, what is the output. So for what combination you want the output high, you have to note down in the truth table. Now once the truth table is prepared, then from the truth table, we can write a Boolean expression. Now this Boolean expression you can write in the form of the SOP or you can write in the form of the POS. So this is the third step. Then you can a, minimize the Boolean expression or you can say that you can simplify. Now for the simplification of the Boolean expression, you can apply a Boolean law. This is a one of the method. And suppose we do not have idea about the Boolean law, then we have another method which is known as a Carnot math method. That regarding the Carnot math, we will discuss in the next lecture. But either you apply the Boolean law or you draw a Carnot map, simplify the Carnot map and get the simplified Boolean expression. And this simplified Boolean expression you have to implement. Implement the logic circuit using gates. Means using either and or not or an AND gate, NOR gate, you can in. So in this way, you can design a digital circuit. So again, the first step is you have to define the problem. According to your problem, you prepare the truth table. From the truth table, you have to write a Boolean expression. So particularly in this lecture, we will discuss that how to write the Boolean expression. Once you have the Boolean expression, then you can simplify using the Boolean law or a card of that and then we can implement this in a logic circuit using the logic gate. Okay? Now let us see that how to write the Boolean expression. Here the first of all we will discuss about a sum of product method. Remember, the first one is sum of product method. Now, what is a product? Here, 
product means it is nothing but ending of the variables ending of the variable here the product doesn't mean that the algebraic products and product will be there but in a boolean algebra we can have a ending of this variable and whatever the variable is producing the output of the circuit you have to take the ending of that variable and here that product here you have to take a origin of this product you can or you can say it is a sum of the product so here we have a product one of the product will be there another product will be there third product is there and if you take a summation or you can say if you orient this product then that equation is known as a sum of product expression correct now what is product just already mentioned that the product just already mentioned that the product is nothing but the ending of the variable correct so you can have a two variable three variable in your design problem or the four variable and you have to take the combination of this variable this product is also known as a fundamental product remember it is called a fundamental product it is also known as a mean terms it is also known as a standard product remember so these are the different name of the product fundamental product or it is known as a mean terms or it is known as a standard product so suppose we have a two variable a and b correct and their complements are a a bar and b bar so we have two variable means there will be a four combination for the ending of this here a will be end with b and a can be also end with a b bar so the first ending first ending will be a a into b then it is ending a is ending with the b bar so a b bar then the third combination a bar is going to be ending with this b so we can have a bar b and the a bar is going to be ending with this so we have a bar b bar and you can see it is a kind of a product a into b a into b bar a bar into b then this is known as a fundamental product fundamental product or it is known as a mean terms remember correct so here let us say that if we have the same gate we can say input a and input b so what is the ending of this that is a into b that is my first one then if i will take the second one then here we have a and b bar and the output is a into b bar the third one if you take a third one then it is a a bar and b output is a bar b and if you see the fourth one that is the a bar and b bar output is a bar and with b bar correct so the two variables and it has a four ending combination a b a b bar a bar b a bar b bar now if you see that if the a is equal to a 
1 and the b is equal to 1 then the a dot b is always going to be a 1. Same way, here a is 1 and the b bar a b that b is 0. Here if the b is 0 then the b bar is going to be a 1. So this output is going to be a 5. Here if a is 0 then the a bar is going to be 1 and the b is also 1 a bar b is going to be 1. Then the a is 0, b is 0, so a bar will be a 1, b bar will be 1, and a bar b bar is going to be 1. So here whatever the fundamental product we have, this fundamental product are always producing the high level. They are a producing the output of this n k and that is always a 1. So if we summarize this in the form of the truth table, then I can write in this way. That we have two variables A and B is there. Then we can have a combination of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and the fourth combination will be a 1, 1. So, if I will write, what is the mean term or the fundamental product? Mean term is what? You have to take the ending of these two variables A and B such a way that it will produce the high level. So, here if I will take the ending of A and B, A is 0, B is 0, so output is going to be 0. And then what I have to do, I have to take the complement of A as well as the complement of B and then if I will take the ending, then it is a A bar dot B bar. Okay? So A bar dot B bar is my fundamental product or it is known as the main term. Same way, if you see the second one, A is 0, B is high, but if I will apply to the end case, then output will be 0. But for the fundamental product, what I have to do? I have to take the complement of this variable A. So, A bar will be there and the B is already high. So, I don't have to complement. So, A bar dot B is representing a main term for the fundamental product for this combination of A and B variable. Same way, in the third one, A is already high. You don't have to take the complement. But the B is 0, so we have to take the complement so that the output is going to be high. So A dot B bar is a main term for this combination. And here A and B both are high. So A dot B that is representing a main term for the fundamental product for the combination of A is equal to 1 and the B is equal to 1. I think so. Now it is clear that what is the main term? Main term means you have to take the ending of the variable such a way that this output is going to be high. And for that you have to complement or uncomplement the variable. Then you can do it and you can write this main terms. Now this main terms also it is represented in a different way. Here main terms is represented as M. Remember. Then here we write the subscript 0. Why it is this 0? The subscript is representing what? That whatever the binary number is there, that is equivalent to a decimal number. So 0, 0 is a binary number and equivalent of that uh, decimal number is also 0. Now we have the 0, 1. That is why binary number is 0, 1. So what is the equivalent decimal number? It is 1. So, this term is represented as M1. Then, if you look at this combination 1, 0, 1, 0 is that is a binary number and its equivalent decimal number is 2. So, I can represent this with M2. And same way, 1, 1 is representing number 3. Then, this mean term is known as M3. So, Whatever the fundamental product is there, if you do not want to write 
in terms of the variable then also you can write in terms of m0 m1 m2 and m3 correct so here when we write the expression then this expression will be written as i have mentioned that you have to take the product and then you have to take it or in what basis then for whatever the combination your output is high for that combination you have to consider what is my fundamental product suppose for this combination the output is high for this combination the uh, output is high for this combination output is high and here the uh, output is zero then i have to take a summation of this mean term this mean term and this mean term so it is n0 n1 and n3 so in this way you can represent the boolean expression or uh, what is n0 n0 is nothing but a bar b bar plus n1 is what a bar b and what is n3 a b so this is my boolean expression in the form of sop correct now we will take a example of a three variable then i think so the idea will be very clear to you okay so look at this truth table we have three variable a b and c then how many combination will be there there will be eight combination remember you should know that if n is representing a number of variable number of variables here the variables are a b <coughs> and c is there then the number of combination number of combination will be always 2 raised to n here how many how many variables are there so 3 so 2 raised to 3 so you will have a a combination and in the truth table you can see the combination number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 a combination is there suppose we have a four variable a b c d then the number of the combination will be 2 raised to 4 and the 16 combination will be there right <coughs> okay now here how to write this combination so you have to start with the 0 0 0 that is representing a binary number 0 uh, and the decimal equivalent is also 0 then what will the ls be is there you go on adding 1 so 0 0 0 1 1 so my next number will be 0 0 1 then if you add 1 then you will get 0 1 0 then if you add 1 here 0 1 1 and in this way you can write a eight different combination in the truth table okay now what will be the fundamental product so here a is 0 b is 0 c is 0 so if i will take the ending of a b c then it will be 0 but to write the mean terms of the fundamental product the output should be high and therefore i am complementing the a complementing the b and the complementing the c and therefore we write a prime b prime c prime remember this is a uh, another notation here you can have a a bar b bar c bar it is also written as a a prime b prime and c prime so a prime is representing the complement of a b prime is representing the complement of b okay so this is what is first combination my fundamental product is a prime b prime and c prime then here in the second combination A is zero, B is zero, and C is one. So I have to complement 
A and B. So it is A, a prime, B prime and C will be there. Same way, if you see this combination, then the A is already high, B, C is already high, but the B is zero. So I have to complement. So this is A, A, B prime, C. Or you can say A, B bar, C is there. And the last one, A, B, C, all are high. So here A, B, C will be your fundamental product. Then the mean terms. We have already mentioned it is represented as M0, M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6 and M7. So it is there are eight combination. So the mean terms are from 0 to 7. And already mentioned that whatever the subscript is there, here the M7, then the 7 is representing what? It is representing a decimal number of your input combination. And the uh, input combination is 1, 1, 1 and this decimal number is equal to a 7. Here 1, 0, 0 then this decimal number is equal to 4. So my mean terms is m4. Correct? Here if you take this then here this decimal number 0, 1, 0 that is 2. So my mean term is m2. So these are the notation. These are the notation which you should remember or we should understand to write a Boolean expression. Yeah. I think so. Now it is clear what is the fundamental product and what are the main terms. Correct? Okay. Now how to write the expression? Then let us say <coughs> we have a <coughs> problem with the three variable a, B and C. Then for certain combination the output is high and for certain combination output is zero. Let us say for A, B, for this combination my output is high. For this combination also output is high. Here the output is zero, 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 zero and let us say for this combination output is high. So I want to design the circuit. Remember I want to design the circuit in which for the first two combination and the last two combination the output is high and for the rest of the combination of the variable output should be zero. Now what will be the Boolean expression or how to write this Boolean expression for this truth table. Okay? And in that case here wherever your output is high wherever your output is high, for that you have to see what is the fundamental product. And then you take the sum of this fundamental product or you orient this sum of, uh, fundamental product that will give you the Boolean. So output is high at this, for this combination, for this combination, my fundamental product is A prime B prime C. For this combination, my fundamental product is A, B, C prime and here it is in A, B, C. So I will take the sum of this four fundamental product and that is your Boolean expression. So this Boolean expression I can write as Y is equal to, what is the fundamental product here? Here it is A, A bar, B bar, C plus it is A bar, B bar, C, then we have A plus A, B, C bar and the fourth one is A, B, C. So this is a fundamental product one, fundamental product, second term, third term is a fundamental product <coughs> and the fourth and I am taking the ordering of this. So this is a known as a SOP expression. This is my Boolean expression, remember. But in which form? That sum of product matter. Now, here you can apply a Boolean law and simplify the expression. That now we are not simplifying, but you should know how to represent the SOP expression. So one of the method for representing the SOP method, SOP <coughs> expression is that you can write in terms of a, B and C. Now what is the another method? Another method 
means here the first one a bar b bar c is representing which mean terms it is representing a n0 correct so i will write a n0 or in which a bar b bar c is representing a n1 so n1 then a b c bar a b c bar is here so it is a n6 and n7 this is a another way for writing the sop expression remember so either in the exam it will be given in the form of the abc or if it is given in the form of a mean terms now here we have a summation of the mean terms so here we can use this symbol like a sigma sigma is a symbol for the summation in a algebraic but here the sigma is representing the ordering of the product so we can use the sigma and m into bracket i have to take the summation of which mean terms that this is a 0 1 6 and 7 correct so here we have to write y that is a function of a b and c y is a function of a three variable and for that my expression is 0 1 6 7 remember when you write this then always you have to represent how many variables are there if the variables are a b c and d then the expression will be a different remember and that's why we have it is necessary to write the number of variables a b c or a b c d x y z or the uh, p q whatever it is okay so the sop expression boolean expression we can write in these three forms either you write abc form or you can write in terms of the summation of the fundamental product or you can write the you can use the symbol of a sigma m0167 correct okay now how to draw the circuit diagram for this problem for this problem now i want to implement a logic diagram so what we can do remember so we have three variables a b c and then complements a bar b bar and c bar so first of all you have to draw a lines or you have to draw a bunch of the variable this bunch of the variable is known as the bus remember so here i will draw a first line then the second one third fourth fifth and sixth remember three variable that are then these are a a this is a this is b and this one is c and their complements a a bar b bar and a c bar remember so here these are the lines or you can say these are the wires which carry the variable and in technical language we can say it is known as a bus which carry the information of a b and c correct okay now we want to draw this diagram for this boolean expression y so first of all you can see we have a product of or the ending of a bar b bar and c so we have to take the ending of a bar b bar and c so where is my a bar a bar is here so you draw a line a bar then b bar and third one is a c okay and it is here which gate we have to use a end gate so you can draw a end gate 
this is representing a bar b bar and c then what is next next term is a bar b bar sorry i have make a mistake a bar b bar and c bar is here the first term is a bar b bar c bar is there so here i have to draw a line instead of this it will be from this so this is a bar b bar c bar second term is a bar b bar c so draw a line from a bar then b bar and this is c okay and we have to take a and b so you will get this fundamental product a bar b bar c right okay. third one is a b c bar so variable a is here draw a line a b and c bar is there and then we have to use again a and b this is a b and c bar and what is the fourth term a b c b is there so draw the lines from this variable a then from b b and c then take a and b so we have a b and c okay so here how to draw a logic diagram remember so once you have the expression then you draw a bus and from this bus for a each fundamental product use the and gate and put this end gate and now we have to take the origin here the summation is there summation means in boolean algebra we have to use a or operator means a or gate here the output is given to a or gate so this is the or gate and we change the input we change the input This is my y. There you go. So in this way, you can draw a logic diagram. Now in this logic diagram, if we see in the first level of the logic diagram, we have used In the first level, we have used a and b, right? And in the second level, we have used a or b. So this circuit is known as a and or circuit. Remember here. so what you have to remember that when you have we have a sum of product expression then always it will produce a and or circuit now here if you see the practical problem that in the final state we have a poor input or gate is there but practically if we see the in the market the poor input 
or bit is not available then you cannot uh, implement the circuit okay so we can use a universal gate what are the universal gate they are a nand gate and the nor gate so the same circuit we can implement a, with the help of a universal gate now how can i implement try to understand let let us say here whatever the output of the same gate is there if i will a complement this means if i will use a nd gate same with here also if i will use a not gate here again a not gate means whatever the output of this and gate are there it is going to be a inverted using the not gate now once i am inverting the variable then to get the same variable again i have to invert this remember so again this variable is going to be a inverted so there will not be change in the variable now what this indicate here this is my and gate with the not gate so it is representing a nand gate this one is a nand gate same way this is also a nand gate correct so here if you take the combination of and with a not gate then all this combination here it is representing the nand gate so i can replace directly with this nand gate okay so i am replacing this with the nand gate now in the output if you see this is representing what it is a bubble or gate remember it is a bubble or because at the input the signals are inverted so it is a bubble or gate and the bubble or gate is nothing but it is the gate a nand gate bubble or gate is equivalent to what it is a nand gate so if you apply the de morgan's law then you will realize that is a nand so here i can replace this gate then my output is not going to change so what i mean to say here whatever your end or circuit is there this end or circuit is nothing but now here in a first stage of the circuit instead of that we have used a nand gate in the second stage instead of using a or gate we have used a nand gate so this is known as a nand nand circuit remember so whatever the end or circuit is there directly it can be replaced with the nand gate so here in short you have to remember that the sum of product sum of product expression will produce a and and or circuit and that is replaced by nand nand circuit remember at this stage we have not simplified the circuit remember but you can simplify but the ultimately here if it is a sop expression always you will get a 
end or circuit or you will get a nan nan circuit correct okay now you will see some example now in the example remember that here my ex expression is containing all the variable y is equal to a bar b bar c bar a bar b bar c so in, in every product the all the variables are there a b c is here here also a b c or complement or uncomplement form is there so in in this expression every product term has all the variable then this is known as a canonical form of your expression remember this is known as canonical form of sop okay and this will be helpful to you when we are discussing a carnot map <clears throat> okay now let us see the example so the idea will be more clear to you so it will be more clear that the y is a function of a b c and the expression is a bar b c bar plus a b bar Hmm? So forget about this expression. Here your real expression is this. You have to convert into canonical form. Now I already mentioned canonical form means that in every product term there should be a all the variable. Either it will be in the form of a complemented or a uncomplemented. Now if you look at this, then in the first term. A is present, B is present, and the C is present. Means the A, B, C, these three variables are present. So it is this product uh, we do not have to discuss. But in the second product, A and B is present, but the C is missing. Correct. So what we can do here that this is A bar, B, C bar. Then I can write this. A bar dot one. Okay, so your output is not going to change. Then A bar B C bar plus A B bar, and remember, whatever the variable is missing, for that variable you take the sum like here. In this case, the C is missing, so I will write as C plus C bar, and already you know C plus C bar is one. So here now, if you open the bracket, it is a bar b c bar plus a bar b c plus a b bar c bar. Now you can see that in every product, a b and c all are present. So this is known as a canonical SOP form. Here, original expression is this, but in a canonical form, you can write the same expression in this way. Okay. Now let us see a second example. So here again you have to convert this in a as a canonical form. The first term only a b the two variables are there, but your function is of a four variable a b c and d. Correct. Then the second one is a second one is a a b c bar plus a b bar is present. Again here there is a mistake for the printing. So I am correcting this example, and here instead of this, we write as a. It is a function of on the a b c. You can also write. Remember, as a, a practice, you can take this function of a four variable and try to write a S O P form. So. This is a b 
प्लस ए बी सी बार प्लस बी बार नाउ इन द फर्स्ट प्रोडक्ट इन द फर्स्ट प्रोडक्ट ये व्हाट इज मिसिंग सी वेरिएबल इज मिसिंग ये ए बी सी ऑल आर देयर सो यू डोंट हैव टू डिस्टर्ब दैट वन बट इन द लास्ट टर्म द टू वेरिएबल्स आर मिसिंग एंड दैट इज द ए एंड सी सो नाउ व्हाट यू कैन डू गो दैट this is equal to i can write a b and what which variable is missing that is a c so for that i will write c plus c bar correct then a b c bar as it is but now in the third term b bar is there the two terms are two variables are missing and for that we can write a plus a bar and the c plus c bar and if you open the bracket you will get a canonical form of this expression and that is the a b c plus a b c bar plus a b c bar plus you can say here the b bar is there into bracket first of all we open this that is a c plus a c bar plus a bar c Plus a bar c bar, and this is equal to here. Now you can see this term is going to be duplicate. That same term is there, so you don't have to write two times. Only one time you can write that is a b c plus a b c bar, and then here you take the b bar inside the bracket. Then we have a b bar c. Plus a b bar c bar plus a bar b bar c plus a bar b bar c bar. Correct. So this is a canonical SOP form. Now you can see every term contains all the variable a b c either in a complement form or in a uncomplement form. Okay. So in this way. whatever the expression is given to you and whatever the missing variable is there for that you can use that boolean law a plus a bar equal to 1 and then you can x1 this expression Now here, what is the SOP circuit? Suppose the three variable table has a high output for four input condition zero 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 one zero one zero zero one one zero. Okay. Then what is the SOP circuit? So for that, first of all, directly also you can write the expression, but at this moment don't try that one. Here you make a truth table, and then you write. What are the fundamental product? Uh, the mean terms, and then you write the expression. So here, if you see the three variable truth table, here we have three variable truth table A, B, C are there, and now for four input condition, the output is high. What are the input condition? Input condition are zero, zero. Zero, correct. So for zero zero zero, the output is I. I will write one. Then the second condition is zero one zero zero one zero. So again for this, the output is going to be high. Then one zero zero one zero zero. Here also the output is high. And finally for one one zero. One one zero combination is there, so output is high. So here in your problem for this four combination, output is high, and therefore the rest of the combination you means if you want to finish the table, then you put a zero. 
Now, what wherever your output is high, for that you have to write what is the fundamental product. Correct. So these are the fundamental product. And how to write the fundamental product? Already you know. Now you take the sum of this fundamental product, then it will give you the expression. That is why it is a function of a, b, and c, and that is equal to a bar b bar c plus here it is a a bar b c bar plus we have a b bar c and the fourth one is a b c bar correct so this is your boolean expression now the same boolean expression i can write as a bar b bar c is representing one by term which term is m0 then the this one is a m2 then the a b bar c that is a m4 and then we have a m6 correct so in terms of in mean term you can write the expression either in this way or you can write as 0 2, 4, and 6. Now, what will be the S of circuit? That here, you can draw a bunch of the variables, then use the AND gate, or use the LAND gate, and then you can draw this circuit. So, here, and here I am not going to draw the diagram, but you can do it by yourself. Okay? So, the main thing is that, how to write the SOP expression? Now see, what is the problem? Design a logic circuit which light up a bulb when the input is a prime number between 0 and 9. Input is a 4 bit binary number. Here, you have to design the circuit that whenever my input number is a prime, then only the output should be high. Otherwise, the output should be a low. Remember, then you should know what is the prime number. The prime number prime number is that which cannot be a factor means which doesn't have a fraction. So the 2, 3, 5, 7, these are my prime number. Prime number between 0 to 9. Remember, here you have to design a circuit only for the 0 to 9 that you can say it is a kind of a DCD number. Hmm? That. But here the 4 bit binary number, 4 bit means how many combination will be there? 16 combination will be there. Then if you go ahead, then the 11 is also a prime, prime number, 13 is also a prime number, but you, so you do not have to consider that one. Correct? So here we have to write a truth table for a 4 variable. So, here the 4 variable truth table will this. So, here we have a 4 variable A, B, C, D and there are a 16 combination. Correct? Now, for which combination the output has to be high? For this number 2. So, where is my mean term? This is M0, M1 and M2. Correct? So, for this combination, here the output is going to be a high. I will write 1. This is a prime number. 0, 0, 1, 0 is representing a 2. And that is a prime number, so the output is 1. Then, the 0, 0, 1, 1, it is a prime number 3. So, here also you want the output high. Then the next number is 5. So, where is the number 5? This is a number 5 we have to write 1 and then the 7 is there so 6 and 7 sorry this is M5 M6 and this one is M7 correct okay. 5 and 7 and for the rest of the number you have to write 0 
Now remember, here in this truth table, the number 11 is also a prime number, 13 is also a prime number, but we want the output only between 0 to 9. And therefore, for that one, for the number 11 and 13, we are putting 0, 0, 0. Okay? So, this is the problem. According to the problem, we have prepared a truth table. Now, in the truth table, wherever your high output is there, for that you write what is the fundamental product. So, here the fundamental product A is 0, B is 0. So, I have to take the complement of this. So, it is a, a bar, B bar, C is 1 as it is and the D is 0. So, take this complement A bar, B bar, C, D bar. Then, for the number 3, A bar, B bar, C and D. Here, for this number 5, if I write the fundamental product, it is A bar, B, C bar, D. And for number 7, it will be A bar, B, C and D. Okay? So, wherever the output is high, for that we write the fundamental product. Therefore, my expression will be y is a function of a, b, c and d and this is a a bar b c bar d plus a bar b bar c d bar plus a bar, B bar, C, D bar, plus A bar, B, C bar, D, and the fourth one is A bar, B, C, D. This is the SOP expression for a prime number detector. Right? This expression we can write in the mean terms that mean terms will be what? A M2, M5, M7, M2, M3, M5, and M7, or we can write A M2, 3, 5, and 7. So, once you have this Boolean expression, Once you have this Boolean expression, then you can draw a logic diagram. Okay? And that logic diagram will be in what form? It will be a and R circuit or it can be a NAND NAND circuit. Okay? Now, how to draw the circuit diagram? Already you know that I am, that's why I am not going to draw this. So, in this lecture, we have discussed about a SOP expression. In SOP expression, we have not minimized the expression. Now, in the next lecture, we will see how we can minimize the SOP expression using a Cartoff map. Cartoff map is a very easiest method through which you can a, uh, minimize the logic expression.